How much work must be done to bring three electrons from a great distance apart to within 2.3 times 10 to the negative 10th meters from one another at the corners of an equilateral triangle? Express your answer using two significant figures. Okay. <laughs> it's always funny. I, whenever I think significant figures, I think like um, someone important in life. So like Tom Cruise and George Bush's. I was like, oh, those are significant figures. Let's find out what they mean. Okay, focus, focus, focus. So we have three electrons. We want to bring them from a great distance. So I'm going to assume this great distance is infinity. So the idea here is you have an electron here, you have an electron here. They have a repulsion force because opposites attract. Um, similar charges repel, so they're going to be pushing each other away. And that will be based on... Cumulative force, kq squared over r, where q is an electron, q squared over r squared, yep, q squared over r squared, but then as that r goes to infinity, well, then that force basically goes down to zero. And so when, you, when it says great distance apart, that means they start with zero interaction on each other. That's just the more formal way of saying it. So I think I'll stick with blue. The way we do this is we start with one electron. We're like, all right, we have one electron here, and we want to take another electron and put it there. So we're going to take it from over here and move it there. So we have a formula that we probably just have memorized in life, which if you don't have it memorized, you should. So potential equals K Q over R. And this is the uh, electrostatic potential for a point charge. We're going to assume these electrons are point charges. They're pretty small. How small are they? I think 10 to the negative. Can you even talk about this size of it? I don't know. If yes, very small, exceedingly small. Okay. Hmm. Okay. Focus. Focus. So we have k, q in this case. So the potential here is the potential at this point due to um, our first electron. I'll call this electron one. So this is the potential from one at, let's say, point two. So this will, the distance between one and two will define R, and the Q will be defined by our electron here. So K, I'm going to write this as E for the Q. The charge of an electron is, there's a number for it in coulombs, but right now I'm just going to leave it in terms of electron charges, and then we'll convert later. And then the distance will be r, which I'm just going to leave as r in this case, which we'll know that r is the 2.3 times 10 to the negative 10th. Okay, so this will be the voltage between point 1 and 2. So now we want to convert this voltage into a work. So the way you, can you convert um, voltage into work is, I'm going to say this work 1, 2. So the work to bring this electron from all the way out here in will be... Q times V. Charge times voltage is the amount of work required to move a charge through a um, through an electric potential. So the way I remember this is one of the units, so you, when you think of work, you usually think of units of energy. One of the measures of energy is, so you have joules, but another unit is electron volts. And what that really means here is electron is a charge, Q, and volt is a measure of potential or voltage. So Q times V gives you work. That's how I remember the uh, equation. So in our case here, so it'll be Q from a, an electron through the voltage 1, 2. And so this will be Ke over R times another charge here, which is E, because we have two electrons, one electron, two electrons, and so this will be Ke squared over R. Now this looks similar to what you would think for the uh, force, Coulomb's force, which is Kq squared over R squared, which is two um, point charges, but potential, you're only going to have a single R in the bottom, R to the first instead of R squared. So one of the things your spider senses should be aware of and acutely attuned to is when you 
when you're thinking of potential, think of r to the first power, not r to the second. So we had an r squared in the bottom there, which would which suspect something went wrong. Okay, so that's how we do. We brought one in. Now we want to bring in another one. So the potential from let's say v one. I'm going to say this is point three. So now we have this other electron here. V one point three will still be k e over r because it's the same distance here, and we're still talking about the same electron. And therefore, let's do. I'm also going to do while I'm at it voltage at point three due to point two. Now there is you have to be kind of careful about the notation here. There is a semi-rigid way of actually doing notation, and sometimes you can get it backwards if you're not too careful. Depending on how formal the problem is, a lot of times I'll just do the problem, and then when I get to the end of the answer, I'll make sure it has the sign that I want it to have. So that's kind of what I'm doing here. So the voltage from two to three is also going to be Ke over R because they're all electrons. So this is the second electron, and this is the first electron, but they're all just electrons. So that they're okay. So the work from one onto three will be the same idea as above. So I'll have another Q voltage one three, except this is going to be the third electron, which is still an electron. I guess I could do E three there. And we're going to get K, oh, that looks like an R, should be a K, K E squared over R. And then this will be work from two to three. And this will be Q times V again. This will be two to three though. Same idea because they're all electrons and they're all the same distance, so k e squared over r. And so now we need to combine these potentials. So we have three potentials we're looking at, and when we combine them, we're combining scalars. We're not combining vectors, and so when we combine them, we're going to do voltage, no, work total. We could do it in terms of voltage. I'm going to do it in terms of work though. Work total will just be all of these add together. They're all the same. This will be 3ke squared over r. And this will be our final value. We'll convert it into a real number in a sec, but that's the general idea. So to backtrack, you think, okay, we just found the point charge for three um, point charges, and so we just did three times the point charge formula for voltage. And that's not really quite the right way to think about it. The way you think about it is um, dragging a an electron from infinity and then putting it to where you want. So the first electron here, we grabbed it from infinity and put it here so that we have one dot. So eh, good. Electron, put it down there, one dot. And that one's free. We can do zero work involved because there wasn't anything stopping it. So then we grab a second electron, we bring it over here, and this second dot is going to cost us some work because it's being opposed by this one over here. These two electrons are opposing each other, so that second is going to take one of these equations of work. So then we bring in a third one though, bring it in like so. It's going to be opposed by both of these. So don't think of it as, all right, we have three electrons, we have three little things of work, one for each electron. Not really, because the first electron, that's free, the second electron, that costs us one, and then for the third electron, it's going to cost us two because it's being opposed by two separate electrons, which are already there. Okay, so now I've got three Ke squared over R. So we have three times, let's go to the Wikipedia. Uh, it's Coulomb's constant, Coulomb's constant, ah, Coulomb constant, no wonder why it's not a uh, 1 over 4 pi epsilon not, yep, 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 aha, here's what, 8.99 times 10 to the 9th, 3 times 8.99 times 10 to the 9th, scooch over just a little bit, then we'll look up electron, go up slightly, electron ba -ba -bum, spin we want to go down to charge electric charge so we'll do it in coulombs 1.602 times 10 to the negative 19th 
1.602 times 10 to the negative 19th. And then this is squared, so we have to remember not to, you know, not forget to square it. Whoop. And we want to divide by r, which I guess looks like radius. I don't mean it to be radius. It's 2.3 times 10 to the negative 10th, and that's already in meters. So that's good. So we have 2.3 times 10 to the negative 10th. Okay, so gonna go to Wolfram, put this in. Let's do a Wolfram. So we have a three times 8.99 times 10 to the ninth times, I think it's 1.602 times 10 to the negative 19th, which is the charge of an electron. And then we'll divide by, bump, 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 2.3 times 10 to the negative 10th, is that right? 2.3 times 10 to the negative 10th, yep. 2.3 times 10 to the negative 10th. And we'll make sure that it actually does the equation right. 3.99, that seems reasonable. Ah, I forgot to square it, for shame. All right, so, 3, 8.99 times 10 to the 9th. Make sure real quick. 1.602 to the 19th. 1.6 squared. Yeah, it seems reasonable. So the answer then is 3 times 10 to the negative 18th. 3 times 10 to the negative. Oh. So we have about 3.01 times 10 to the negative 18th joules, which seems all right, because electrons are very small, their charge is very small, and so you're going to get a very small amount of work required to bring them close together. I guess it depends on how close, but this is, yeah, it's about the size of an atom, an angstrom. Okay, so, boom, 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 and then you want to express it in terms of two significant figures, so it's probably 3.0 times 10 to the negative 18th joules. So that's how we do that one. Backtrack a little bit, just kind of look to see what we did here. So we were taking electrons, putting them together in a configuration. The way I like to think of that is you take one and then you move another one in and then you move another one in and you just keep going sequentially through like an iteration process. Um, since it's a scalar, it doesn't really matter which one you start with first. Once you get them all together, you should get the same answer of how much uh, work it takes. So hope that explained it. Hope that helps you out. I will see you on the next problem. Thank you much.